this spirit, you are full of wisdom, then come and take over. A man of wisdom today is the man that will take over tomorrow. Don't go after sentiment. Wherever you are, go after wisdom. Go after God. God. Run after the fear of God. And that very soon, all your contemporary will be subdued under the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are far ahead of you today by <laughs> nepotism, statism, uh, uh, man no man, <laughs> very soon the level will change. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, but if you check it very well, the fear of the law was demonstrated by Joseph. That's one of the first vivid virtue that we saw in Joseph. How shall I do this wickedness and sin against God? That's fear of the law. There's no greater in this hour than I. Neither has I kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Eschew fornication and adultery. The fear of the law. Huh? The fear of the law. And when you check what happened next, that was where the good story about Joseph began. It was that time that the wisdom of God took over the life and destiny of Joseph. All this fornicating all over the place, telling lies and doing all manner of dubious business. You are here to start in the school of wisdom. You'll be so foolish if you continue in saying you'll be so foolish that even the fool will call you fool. And if you check it very well for Daniel, Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's rich food. That's where the story, good story of Daniel began. No, he proposed in his heart not to. Not to. Let me tell you, uh, if you don't purpose not to sin, you will be falling and rising out of sin. You fo follow God by purpose of heart. Determination coupled with a vow. That's how to make it. And you remember what happened? Hmm. The secret that nobody, no magician, no astrologer could get. It was Daniel that it was revealed to. Because one of the things you see from wisdom is revelation, inspiration. It just be flowing. So, what are we saying therefore? At the root of supernatural wisdom is the fear of the law. Psalm 111, verse 10. Is the fear of the law. At the root of supernatural wisdom he is what? The fear of the law. The fear of the law is the beginning of wisdom. It's not the conclusion. A good understanding half all day that do his command. You see understanding again? <laughs> fear of the law, understanding half all day that do his commandment, that fear him. His praise endure it forever. <laughs> now, what is the fear of the law? Simply stated, the fear of the law is the holy reference for God which makes man to depart from sin. Only reference. And in case you don't understand the reference, only respect. You have so much reference for God that you will not like to offend him. 
You love him so much that you don't want to hurt him. That's the fear of the law. That's the fear of the law. And then the scriptures still define, give us a coverage of what it covers. Proverbs 8, 13. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Ah. That is not just I'm running away from evil. You hate it. You don't want to see it. It is detestable to you. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's one of the first description. Pride. Can you see that? Because pride and arrogance is rooted in, dev in the devil. And the evil way, any way that is evil, you hate it. And the forward mouth, do I hate? You see, hate, hate. Hatred for evil. Love for good. That's the fear of the Lord. And if you go to Job 28, where the word of God is throwing the question, where is the place of wisdom? Where can we find understanding? You can read it from verse 12. Hmm. To 28. You can't get it by gold. It's not found among the living. No search of man, no intellectual search can amount to it. The hardest of currency can't give wisdom. And the last verse there, verse 28. When you see those questions, where is the place of understanding? Where can wisdom be found? You will be thinking one major requirement. But you see, to God, it's a major requirement. You want to find wisdom? This is what to do. Verse 28. And unto man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord. <laughs> that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. <laughs> you are a man of understanding when you depart from evil. And it is understanding that provokes wisdom. Because what you, do, you can't understand, you can't apply and if you can apply <laughs> application before manifestation, that is wisdom. Now, if you read it very well, with all that has been analyzed in chapter 28, you now be wondering, you are, you, are, you are trying to catch what is it? What is this? Well, what is so, this wisdom, the principal thing, what do I need to get it? <laughs> he said, uh, very simple. At the root of the wisdom of God, the root is fear of the law, the foundation, fear of the law. And we have simplified it, departure from iniquity, departure from arrogancy and pride, departure from evil way. And the fruit of that departure I mean, the root is the fear of the law. The fruit is departure from iniquity, the evidence. I fear God, though, as you see me so. I fear God, though. Even God, no, I fear him. No. What is the fruit? You are still fornicating. What is the fruit? You are stealing. You are a liar. Where, where is the fear of God? Maybe you fear your boss because of your salary. And some people, it's because they have no same money to steal. You think they fear God. Give them money. You will know the fear of God is just, uh, it's just by mouth. I fear God. I fear God. I fear God. No problem. One little temptation, you will fall flat. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. For fresh baptism of the fear of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's check two other major channels to supernatural wisdom. Two other channels by which you can 
flow in supernatural wisdom. Number one is apply revelations of the word. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Apply revelation of the word. It's possible to bend down, read, and search the scripture, which you are supposed to do daily, as commanded in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. You search, you bend, you read. From reading, you go into meditation. And from meditation, revelations. <clears throat> That's why we are talking of apply revelation of the word. Not revelation of the word. No, applied. I apply, because no matter the quality of the revelation, no matter the source of that revelation, until there is application, there will still remain frustration. A lot of people are revelation bank. When you see them talking, you will say, this man is loaded. This man, he has light. <laughs> but it's not how much of light that you have, but it's how much of it you allow to shine. He said, no one light a candle and put it under a bushel. So to have revelation and not apply it, in fact, you are worse than somebody who doesn't have at all. But take note. Apply revelation of the world is one major way by which you build up your wisdom bank. In James 1, 22 to 25, he said, whosoever look at the perfect law of liberty and continue the army, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. He said, that man shall be blessed in all his ways. Can you see that? So, his application. The emphasis here is application of revelation. And Matthew 7, 24 to 25, he said, whosoever hear this word of mine and do them. The same is a wise man. Doing the word. You see, we have fear of God. If you have the word and you do the word, that is also an indicator of you fear the Lord. Who spoke the word? Who gave the word? Who gave the revelation? And number two way of receiving supernatural wisdom is through inspiration or inspired insight through inspiration or inspired insight. Job 32, 7 to 8, there's a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty. Give it to understanding. Can you, you, you will always see that we are going out from knowledge, understanding, wisdom, we, you know, they are all interwoven. There is all, only a very thin demarcation. But they are all in the same school of wisdom. So, what are we saying, therefore? Inspiration. We have the mind of Christ. So we are expected to be as inspired, always inspired as he is. First John 4.17. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. First Corinthians 2.16 says, we have the mind of Christ. And if you have his mind, then we should enjoy his order of inspiration. Because the word inspiration means the Holy Ghost brooding over your mental region and making you coming out with unusual, creative thought, productive insight. The thing just come, boom! And you cannot accurately define, say, this is where it is from. The Holy Ghost, just your helper, he brood over your mental region and you begin to think the unthinkable. You begin to reason beyond the natural. You begin to be creative just suddenly. That's inspiration. Inspiration. Remember the Bible came down to us through inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The whole of this scripture came by inspiration. 
2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. Holy men put it down as they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Inspire that will tell you the place of inspiration. Without inspiration, we won't have the Bible. Inspiration. 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 I want to ask a question. The first Adam, there was no school. There was no university. Yet, he still scored excellence in the exam that is set by God. There were no coaching class. There was no mock test. How did he make it? <clears throat> How did the first Adam operate it? No education. May I inform you, the first Adam operated by inspiration and revelation. What come upon him by the Holy Ghost and what was revealed to him by God. That's all. And I want to say to everyone under the sound of my voice, that is how we are built to live. We are built to live by inspiration and revelation. It will enhance the quality of our living. If you are in ministry, inspiration and revelation will enhance the quality of your ministerial exploit. Inspiration. Because it's not all the time you see everything you are to do on the pages of the Bible. Our Father and the Lord was asked, Arise, go to Lagos. Go and raise me people. Lagos is not in the Bible. That's how it is. How is that kind of thing? No. Something, the knowing, the knowing that is just the knowing of God, the knowing from God, the knowing by God. They are all by inspiration and revelation. If you can just set yourself well and connect to the wisdom of God and begin to operate in wisdom and leave sin and iniquity alone, you will see that your business will go places. Because why others are using what they get from Harvard to run their business, you'll be using in addition, inspiration and revelation. And the gap is wide between somebody using education and another man using inspiration and revelation. You will beat them to it. Let me give this testimony. A question was given. The wickedness of the lecturer, out of 60 marks for final exam, 30 marks for one question. And we were never taught. Now, I got the question. I look at it. I know we are not taught. It's not, there's no doubt about it. We are not taught. I don't have any idea. I simply pray in the exam hall. Holy Spirit, what is the answer? What do I do? I don't know anything here. You know what he told me? He said, start anywhere. I heard him. Start anywhere. Men and brother, I got 30 over 30 of that question. And I happen to be the only person that got that mark. <laughs> only person. So when the people were crying, hey, who? He said, but somebody got it. <laughs> That's how wisdom distinguishes those who have it. Are you hearing me? They are now asking me, how did you get it? Honestly, I can't explain. <laughs> I just knew that I got it. Beginning from now, you will get it. Where others are missing it, you will get it. Where others are falling and failing, you will be a super success. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We see Sol Solomon the wisest in his day. He enjoyed unusual inspiration. A lot of song 
First King 3, 5 to 12, he has for the wisdom. And in First King 4, 29 to 34, all manner of proverbs, all manner of songs. Why? Inspirations. From now, I commend you to God of all inspiration. Where your inspiration ends is where you begin to aspire. You will never aspire. Yeah. And where there's no more inspiration, no more revelation, you begin to go down. You begin to vegetate. You begin to stagnate. That is the reason. You don't know what to do again. But with inspiration and revelation, you will always know what to do next. Not only that, the power bringing that inspiration and revelation will also help you to do it. And at the end of it, you begin to excel. You see Paul the Apostle also, he enjoyed abundance of inspiration. He wrote nearly half of the New Testament. Galatians 1, 11 to 15. Inspiration. Inspiration. You don't lack what to write as a student. You don't lack what to do as a worker. You don't lack what next as a minister. Under inspiration. So, with this, what do we do then? Then, one of the things you should cry for in this Shiloh 2021 is more of his wisdom. Let me give you the prayer. Father, take more of me and give me more of your wisdom. That's all. When you say take more of me, it means take away my foolishness and substitute them with your wisdom. And as you do that, my God will answer you. It's a mountain of answer prayer. So get set. God will fill you with extraordinary wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release upon you, everyone under the sound of my voice, fresh baptism of the Spirit of wisdom. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shall we welcome the choir as they lead us further? Put your hands together for the Lord as we welcome the choir. Everlasting Father, everlasting Son, immortal Holy Ghost, be the glorified. Everlasting Father, everlasting Son, immortal Holy Ghost, be the everlasting.
Oh, my God, you will live to die. Hey, say the days you will live to die. Messiah, you will live to die. the more triumphant we become. Get set, therefore. We are about to take another lesson. We've taken one a little while ago. We'll take another one now. I'm sure there is a student here this morning who will soon graduate into the class of more than a conqueror. <laughs> Teachers are agents of knowledge communicators. And this morning again, we'll be listening to another teacher. A teacher. That this morning, something unique will be added to what we have received earlier. 
If you are not tired of learning, rise to your feet and speak to God. I'm still here as your student. I'm still here as your student. Unveil the next word to me. I know you have made me to know something, but there is something I ought to know that I don't know yet. Open my eyes to that thing, Lord. Open my eyes to learn the thing that I ought to know. The thing that I ought to know. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name. Ministering to us in this second word is none other person but our dearly beloved mother, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oedeko. Let's receive the ministry of the world through her this morning with a big hand to the Lord. Shiloh 2021 and more than a conqueror shout the loudest hallelujah would you lift your right hand to the almighty God wherever you are right now and say after me heavenly father right now for your word again Send me my own word now. In Jesus' name. And shout the loudest, amen. amen. Father, as your people have declared it, make it happen for us. Send us your word again. Change our story again. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. amen. Please, you may be seated and put your wonderful hands together for the Lord. If that hand clap is for Jesus, you can make it bigger and louder. Praise God. This morning is my privilege to be able to stand here upon this exalted altar to share the word of God with us in this segment I appreciate God's servant for this privilege. And I know that that which God has in stock for each one of us shall be delivered in Jesus' name. And I allow that. Amen. Amen. Again, for the first word this morning, put your hands together for the Lord to appreciate him. Amen. Amen. In this segment, we're looking at this topic caption, Engaging the Power of Love. Engaging the power of love. Engaging the power of love. And I want to read for a text, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39. Romans 8, 37 to 39. Romans chapter 8. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that did what? No. Louder, please. No. The loudest you can. No. So love is it. 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. 39. Verse 39. Nor height, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from what? From what? The love of God, which is in Christ our Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. From the start out, it's very important for us to understand that every believer, everyone that is born again, has been redeemed as a more than a conqueror. Do I have a believer in the house this morning? If you're a believer, wave your hands to the Lord and shout aloud, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. If that is so, then you have been redeemed to be more than a conqueror. Who is more than a conqueror? 
We had several definitions last night. But simply put, to be more than a conqueror is to put your enemies to flight without a fight. To put your enemies to flight without what? Without a fight. That is talking about surpassing victory. And Jesus Christ and several other people in scriptures demonstrated that to us. Remember in the Gospels, the evil spirits exclaimed concerning Jesus, have you come to destroy us before the time? We know who you are. You are Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He didn't talk to them. They sighted him from afar off and they were put to what? To flight. That is what it means to be more than a conqueror. Luke chapter 4. You have this, that episode written out there. Again, we see men like Peter in the Bible. In the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 and verse 15. We are told there that the shadow of Peter was healing people. Peter was not present. But sicknesses and diseases began to flee just by his shadow. How about Elisha the prophet? Even after he died, his dry bones, we are told in scriptures, brought a dead man back to life. That is what it means to be more than a conqueror, to put your enemies to flight without a fight. Every enemy of your life, I want to announce to someone under the sound of my voice today, wherever you may be, all over the world, all those enemies of your life that followed you to Shiloh 2021, they shall be put to fly. Yeah. And please understand, when the Bible talks about enemies, it's not just referring to one old woman in your company that is your enemy. Everything that makes you to shed tears behind closed doors is your enemy that stagnation is your enemy that sickness in your body is your enemy in actual fact wherever you may be right now under the sound of my voice if you came to Shiloh with any sickness in your body I decree and declare that that sickness because I pray that the God of heaven that changed my story will change your story. Maybe you have been given days or weeks or months to leave. That sickness is your enemy. It must leave you alone from this moment. What man thought would have never been possible in your life. The God of Shiloh, who has been doing it again and again, will do it for you. Can I hear a louder amen? More than a conqueror over sickness, over disease, that pain in your body is caused. That death sentence that you came to Shiloh with in the name of the God of Shiloh is hereby reverted. And I stand here today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, to declare you shall not die. 
You shall not die. You shall not die. Help me turn to your neighbor and tell him how you shall not die. You shall live. So declare the words of the Lord. Shall they believe in him, man? That stagnation in your life is your enemy. It must leave you alone. You take one step forward and three steps backward in your life, no more. In your career, from today, you shall be forward ever. For those of you who are in school, you are students, you are neither passing nor failing. No more. No more. In your studies, no more failure. The last failure you had is the last you will ever have. Do you know poverty is an enemy? Scratching the bottom of the pot before you can find food to eat. It must stop now. Because you are the person that God said he will use to feed the poor. You are not meant to be among the poor. So that poverty must end here. More than a conqueror, putting your enemy to flight without a fight. That becomes your story from today. Shout the loudest, Amen. Struggling with sin and iniquity is an enemy. You come to church in the morning, you visit the brothel in the night, you are sleeping with other people apart from your husband or wife, it must end now. If you are under the sound of my voice and you know you came to Shiloh from a place that does not glorify God, you must not go back there again. <laughs> Putting your enemies, including sin and iniquity, to flight without a fight, that becomes your story from today. <laughs> but you know what? Please take your seat. But you know what? Love is the covenant platform to living a more than a chronicle lifestyle. Love, love, says me love. And here we are talking about the love of God. The love of who? The love of God. The love of God at work in us as believers is what empowers us to operate in the realm of more than a conqueror. The love of God. The love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 39. Romans 8, 39, we just read it a while ago. The love of God is a platform. Neither height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. The love of God. Say with me, the love of God. Shout it louder. Now the loudest you can. That is the platform. If we must operate in the realm of more than a conqueror, the love of God is a major requirement. To love God, what does it mean? Simple. To love God means giving your heart to God unreservedly. Giving your heart to God unreservedly. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, that's one of my guiding scriptures in life. The Bible says, My son, give me your what? 
your heart and let my, thine eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart until you and I give God our heart. We cannot make our marks in life until we give God our heart. We can never experience what it means to be more than a conqueror. Where is your heart? Where is it? After money? Where is it? After position? Where is it? After fame? Where is your heart? My son, give me your heart. Beside that scripture in my Bible, I wrote it. Take it, Lord. It's yours. Take it, Lord. Give me your heart, my son. Love is a God first lifestyle. Remember, a major scripture in this commission, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Seek it first. Seek it what? Is it second? Is it third? Number what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all other things, including putting your enemies to flight, shall be added, shall become additions to you. That is the realm that God is taking somebody to. Without looking too far. Take an example of the life of God's servant in our midst here, Bishop David Oyedepo. We have heard him say it over and again, taking a stand for God at every point in time. We've heard him share several testimonies with us. Say, for instance, I would rather sink with God rather than shine without him. That's taking a stand for the love of God in the heart of a man. Love, you must understand, is the secret to success. Let me tell you something. By the grace of God, I've been privileged to be around since the inception of this ministry. And I can tell you very clearly, without mincing words, that one of the greatest secrets of how God is making this commission to conquer and be more than a conqueror against all odds is the love for God. A lover of God is not permitted to be stranded. From today, you shall no longer be stranded. Can I hear louder? Amen. The Lord of God is the secret of the success of this commission. What is it? What is it? Louder, please, what is it? The loudest you can, what is it? We've all heard it said over and again, and we have seen it done in several places at several times. Last year, God spoke to his servant, for example, Ten thousand churches to be planted in one year. I've never had it. I've never read it. But I thank God when it was declared, my heart never shook. Why? Because I have seen greater things. Why? Because I have heard greater things that God has declared by his mouth and they were easily executed. Churches in one year, and God did it and beyond. Why? The love of God. Not to make a name, but to spread the gospel, to populate heaven, and to depopulate hell. The love of God. The love of God. Yesterday, we heard God's servant. Share again with us a testimony. I don't know how many of you caught it. 1,000 churches. Buildings built this year. Did you hear that? 1,000 houses, places, 
of worship built to the glory of God. Taking territories for the Almighty God to the glory of His name and to the shame of the devil. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you ever heard such a thing? What ears have not had and eyes have not seen, they are the things that God begins to do in somebody's life. <laughs> if you are the one, let your amen show you to. <laughs> Please hear me. And hear me very well. The degree of your love for God, the intensity of your love for God, how hot, how genuine your love for God is, is what we determine the degree of your manifestation as a more than a conqueror. Upon this mountain, I see God baptize every one of us to a higher degree of love for him. Amen. Shout a louder, amen. amen. The question then is, how do I love God? How do I love God? Number one, we must love God with all our heart soul, mind, and strength. It must be total, inside out. Love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Total love for God, inside out. Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Among several other scriptures, makes this very clear. Loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The grace to do so. Receive it now in Jesus' name. <laughs> and in the scripture, we have several examples of such. For instance, we have the three Hebrew boys. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 18. You can see the episode there. By the three Hebrew boys, the Bible says, be it known unto thee, they said, we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What could make them to dare the king that much? Save me the love of God. Loud die the love of God. And did they overcome or not? In the same vein, you shall overcome. <laughs> Bishop Eliko has said over and again, you don't know the secret of my life until you know my heart beat for God. Until you know my heart beat for God. Ever before we got married, September 1976, he wrote this powerful covenant titled Selling Under Sealed Orders. You've heard the story and the testimony over and again. And he said to me, I can never forget, at the back row of that church building, he said, look at this document. I made a covenant with God. Do you still agree to marry such a man like this? Selling under sealed orders. It has been published several times. Wherever he stands, he said to me, I will go. Do you still think you can marry such a man as this? Selling under sealed orders. And I said to him, yes. Then he said, if that is so, sign here. And I put my powerful signature. Hallelujah. The love of God. The love of God. Without any doubt, one of the major signals that made me to agree to marriage is his love for God. Listen, single people, don't ever marry a man or a woman that does not love God. Oh. <laughs> say, I hear, oh. <laughs> say it loud, I say, I hear, oh. <laughs> Touch your ear and say, I hear, oh. Anyone, male or female, who does not love God and says, I love you, I love you, <laughs> is a liar. 
It's a lie. <laughs> I just love you. I just love you. What he or she is telling you, I just lost you. I just lost you. I just lost you because I will lose you. That will not be you. I said that will not be you. And please, parents, one of the signals that you need to look for, for you to agree for your children to marry anyone, is the love of God. Does that individual love God? That is a capital question. If the love of God is there, then the future is bright. The God of heaven will give you a bright future. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. How must we love God? Number two, very important. We must cleave to the Lord as in marriage. And this is very powerful. Cleave to the Lord as in what? As in marriage. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 5. Look at what the Bible says here. Isaiah 54 and verse 5. For thy maker is thy what? Thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Thine husband. Thine husband. Cleave unto the Lord as in marriage. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. The Bible makes it very clear. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one, what? One husband in the person of Jesus Christ. How many people are here? You are married. Please wave your hands to the Lord. You are married. You are married. Wave your hands to the Lord. Shout the Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. Even if you are not married yet, don't worry, it will soon be your turn. Yeah. I can't hear you loud, amen. No. Yeah. Maybe you are believing God for a miracle marriage or for any of your children. I'd like to congratulate you this morning because this Shiloh is your Shiloh. Yeah. There shall be divine connection yeah. what did I call it not arrangement by man no, but divine connection some of you will walk out you will walk into your wife you walk into your husband you walk into your miracle shout the loudest amen as in marriage you cleave unto the Lord what does it mean to cleave What's the meaning? No assumption. To cleave means to adhere firmly and closely to something. Adhere closely and firmly to something. Adhere with loyalty. Adhere unwaveringly. Adhere and refuse separation. You resist separation. You stick together. That's what it means to cleave. And the Bible is telling us very clearly to love God. This has to cleave in in marriage. You know, there are many people when they just first get married, oh, you can see that love all over them. I love you, I love you. They, they tell each other, they demonstrate it, they are kind to one another, but as the year goes by, they begin to take their spouse for granted. That's what many people do with their love for God. When we first got born again, on fire for God, God says it, we are out to catch it. But as the year goes by, we begin to take God for granted. After Shiloh this year, you shall no longer take God for granted. So we must begin to walk at our love for God. And sure it begins to grow on a continuous basis. Loving God to the end. That grace, receive it in Jesus' name. In Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible declares, For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Ruth decided to cleave 
to adhere to her mother-in-law in marriage. And at the end of the day, she came out as in the lineage of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Someone's story from Shiloh this year will change for the better. If you are the one left to amen, show it. How do you become a more than a conqueror by loving God? How? How does it happen? One, when you love God, we begin to carry God's presence always. We begin to carry his presence always. When you walk in love, you dwell in God and God dwells in you. Remember, God is love, we are told. So walking in love means walking with God. Talking about divine presence. And very clearly, no one ever walks with God and gets defeated. Therefore, as you begin to love God more than ever, you shall begin to enjoy greater divine presence. <laughs> Say, I receive it. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. Look at what the Bible says here. First John 4, 16. The word of God makes it very clear. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. That is me. How about you? Shout it louder. And if God be for us, Romans 8.31, who can be against us? Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear. For God was with him. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Divine presence made all the things happen. From today, you will begin to enjoy divine presence. <laughs> We've heard God's servants share it over and again. Talking about when this place was under construction. And several times when he came around, and he will return and say, I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. That is divine presence. No wonder God has built for himself in Canaan land a city to the glory of his name. Has subdued every evil power. Not only for tabernacle, but the ark project going on with power in a place that used to be named for the devil. God will change your story. Can I hear louder? Amen. I said God will change your story. And in scripture we have several examples of men like that that love God. Remember Joseph? He loved God and enjoyed divine presence. Acts chapter 7 and verse 9. The Bible makes it very clear. God was with Joseph. God was with him. God will go with you from this place. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. And because God was with Joseph, he reigned in Egypt. You remember that story in Genesis. Enough of servitude for you. Enough of bind down and crouching under men for you. As you return from Shiloh this year, you shall begin to stand tall among your equals. <laughs> if God be with you, remember, that promotion that belongs to you will be given to you. <laughs> Many of you shall return from this mountain to meet your promotion letters. <laughs> Many of you shall return from here, you will receive letters of new jobs. Many of you shall return from here with testimonies that will make mouth to sing. <laughs> if you are that person, let your amen show it. <laughs> and number two, as this happens, God will lay your fear upon all nations 
where the soul of your feet shall train. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 22. If you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, and to love the Lord your God to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Look at verse 24. What does it say will happen? 24. The Bible says, verse 24. Studio. Every place. Say me, every place. Does that cover your nation? Stamp your feet on the ground. Every place. Again, every place. The loudest you can, every place. No matter where you are right now on the surface of the earth, the Bible says, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread, all your enemies shall be subdued under your feet. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Psalm 114, verses 1 to 7. What aileth thee? Because of divine presence, mountains were skipping like rams. From today, every mountain will begin to skip before you. <laughs> Everything that used to trouble you will begin to tremble before you. <laughs> I can never forget the testimony and the story of the Queen of Sheba years ago in Liberia that was celebrated and welcomed with pomp and pageantry. But when she heard that God's servant Bishop Boyedekpo was in the same hotel, she packed her baggage and disappeared to the thin air. I still remember clearly the picture of that hotel. Putting your enemies to flight without a fight. That evil queen of Sheba tormenting your destiny, you shall see it no more. And as we round up, number three, it also implies that there shall be no enemy to engage us in battle. Every battle of our lives shall become a walkover. Every battle that follow you to Shiloh this year shall become a walkover. And that is what it means to be more than a conqueror. Remember, Judah, in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, God gave them all round rest because they covenanted to love God. From this mountain, you will covenant to love God more than ever before. And as you do so, every enemy that followed you here will flee at your presence. All through the Bible and in our days, we see men that were made heroes. They became more than a conqueror. Remember Father Abraham? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 41 verse 8, Abraham was a friend of God until today. We have men and women all over the nations of the earth that are still being referred to as Abraham's children. And that includes you and I. Another Abraham will depart from Shiloh this year. <laughs> Remember David? In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible tells us David, a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. And of course, in 2 Samuel chapter 18, and verse 3, the people exclaimed and declared, you are more than 10,000 of us. How did that happen? Through his love for God. Someone's story is changing. <laughs> if you are the person, let your amen show you. <laughs> and then how about Paul the Apostle? In Acts chapter 14 and verse 11, they declared, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. You are returning from Shiloh Mountain as a god over that challenge. And of course, in the same book of Acts, they tried to stone him. And they gathered around him and he rose up. Everything trying to destroy your destiny shall be destroyed upon this mountain. 
We see several stories here and several testimony. Your own testimony shall be the next. We need a testimony, a story of a man that loves God and is more than a conqueror. Look at God's servant in the house. Remember the man that came back to life after being embalmed over 24 hours and a prayer was made the God whom Bishop David Uyedepo serves. And the man came back to life. Every dead area of your life shall come back to life. <laughs> Lord, help me to love you more than ever. This is a prayer we need to pray. This is one of the prayers I pray very often. Lord, help me to love you in a growing dimension. You want to pray that prayer this morning? Rise up on your feet, everyone. All over this place, wherever you may be, lift up your right hand to God. Oh God, help me to love you more than ever before in a growing dimension. Lift up your hands to God and pray that prayer. Lord, help me to love you in a growing dimension more than ever. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your right hand to God. Say after me, oh God. From today, help me to love you in a growing dimension. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Hallelujah. For that powerful word from the Lord, somebody put those hands together for Jesus. In this first hour of visitation for Shiloh 2021, it's Shiloh testimony time. Somebody shout, my breakthrough time. Shiloh testimony time. To the glory of God, this morning we had 27 testimonies recorded. And for the sake of time, only six of them will be shared. Can the following people just rush to the front to share their testimony? Mrs. Philomena Timmy from Portacourt. Mrs. Philomena Timmy. Mrs. Ere Bulu Mamuse from Ekre di Jebu. Ekre di Jebu. Mrs. Erebulu Mamuse. Pastor Bright Mokogu from LFC Ijebu Ode. Pastor Bright Mokogu from LFC Ijebu Ode. Sister Mercy Great from LFC Otupo. Sister Mercy Great. Mrs. Mercy Oga from LFC Iyanodo, Lagos. Mrs. Mercy Oga. And Sister Stella Sasime from Bayelsa State. Put those hands together and the faster you clap, the, the more you clap, the faster they come. Hallelujah. Please come forward to share your testimony. Put those hands together for Jesus, everyone. Your name and what the Lord did. Praise the Lord. Shiloh 2021. More than a conqueror. My name is Pastor Bright Mokogu from LFC Jebumushi. Praise the Lord. God terminated the siege of barrenness of four years in my family. In 2016, I got married, after which we were believing God for the fruit of the womb. My wife came to Shiloh for the first time in 2019, which she attended the Mother of All Nation class. During the period, Bishop Aremu said, he said, no case will survive at this mountain. And we key into the word, which we look 
She now said we should go and buy our baby things and be dancing with it. We came to the mysteries of the commission. And in 2020, my wife was confirmed pregnant. The doctor that said my wife had multiple fibroid PIDs, he was the same person that confirmed my wife pregnant. And in 2021, my wife gave birth to greatness, Mokogu. We have come to return glory to God of this commission. Celebrate Jesus, four years barrenness terminated at Shiloh. Put those hands together for Jesus. My name is Miss Mercy Great. I'm here this morning to return all glory to the God of transformation, the God of settlement. I got wedded in 2016 and the devil came. I want to give God all the praise because the impossibility, he made it possible. I took in immediately and the devil came. The second one became a topic, a topic pregnancy that got my Philippian to brought. And the devil thought he has won the battle. God gave me victory because when the doctor was telling me that your Philippian tools were removed, I told him that I'm not going to mention this case because the God of Bishop Oyedepo I serve has already planted a new one before we left the theater. And that was the end. I did not mention it to myself. I did not mention it to anybody. I took in the devil came. I knew the devil who came because when I was a Honsa coordinator in my place, there are many barren women. I put the word of God in their mouth. I kept declaring for them. I showed them how to make declaration. They were all carrying their baby before I wedded. And so I know the devil who showed up. Four years barrenness, four years miscarriages. God terminated it. I put to birth naturally, without the help of the scientists. I want to return all glory to God like Anna did. Someone celebrate Jesus. They said she had no fallopian tube. Yet, after four years of barrenness, God gave her a miracle baby. Put those hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Philomena Timi. I'm from Portaikot, D. Line Brands, as a husher. 2010, Papa appeared to my dream, and I was living at Oran. He said, relocate, daughter. And he put scripture in my mouth. I've forgotten the scripture. But I located to Portaikot, and things was not working well, but since I came to Portaikot, things began to move well with me. And I never fail with my silo sacrifice. And I t almost every silo I do tell God, gave me my own land and my home building in Port Icon. God gave me the first building, first land. And the, at, the, at the year of 2017. Then 2019, God gave me another land again in Port Icon. And I tell God, Father, I cannot do it. But you, the God I am serving in this great commission, can do it for me. And September, uh, September I started the development of the building. And that process, my son was attacked in the school, Uniport. And I took the son to different hospitals. So God gave me a building, a duplex in Portacot, and he healed my son in Silo Grandia. I come to return all glory to the Almighty God. Financial breakthrough after 20 years of poverty. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am Mrs. Melody Oga. I have come to give God thanks for marital healing and career breakthrough. I joined this commission in 2013. I come from a family of nine children and I am the seventh child. No one has ever gotten married in my family, including my late parents. So I made a covenant with God that I would be the first to be married and break that covenant of no marriage. In 2018, God connected me to my God-ordained husband. In the process of courtship, 
the devil showed up. My husband, then my fiancé, lost his job and accommodation the same day. And me, I became sick. I went to the hospital. The test and scan results showed that I had tuberculosis and a hole in my chest. The devil wanted to end the relationship in that he would say he can't marry me because I'm sick. And me also, I will back off because he lost his job. Shame to the devil. We supported each other. The love increased. We prayed and fasted and also increased the level of our faith. We kept engaging in kingdom advancement prayers. In Shiloh 2019, God restored my health and sealed that hole in my heart. My husband, a master degree holder and a PhD student, because of no job, had to work as a security and a cleaner just to survive. In 2020, few months to the date we picked for our marriage, with no money in our account, we engage on seven days prayer and fasting and midnight praise, praying for people believing God to be married and those that were engaged but no money to be married. God showed up on the last day of the midnight praise. My husband called me and said, babe, I just got a job. And when he told me, and when he told me the salary, it was five times the previous two jobs he was working. December 2021, we gloriously got married. We just celebrated our one year anniversary. I just come to return all the glory to God. Somebody celebrate Jesus for these wonderful testimonies. You are the next to share your Shiloh testimony. Put those hands together for Jesus. Somebody celebrating Jesus for all these testimonies. Give the Lord a shout. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 21, the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. He revealed himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord. We have had the first dose. We have received the second dose. And now it's time for the third dose. Again, someone shall be visited this morning. If that is you, let your amen show it. Every time God's word comes, it comes with your own portion. I'd like you to know that whatever your condition is, your portion will override that condition today. In a moment, the word of God shall be coming. But you must express your expectation so that that condition can be overturned by your portion of the word that will be coming today. I'd like you to rise up this morning and declare your expectation that as the word of God comes, all of my portion from the word shall overturn my condition on this mountain in the name of Jesus. All of my portion from God's word again shall overturn my condition in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree today that as your word come again, our portion with you shall overturn our condition. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And bringing us the third word this morning is God's servant, the first vice president of Living Faith Church, the Bishop David Abioye. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. Thank you, G. That clap is for the Lord. Will you do it bigger? He deserves more of it. Give it to him again. And if you can shout, I am more than a conqueror. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning. Ever since the day began, you have been pouring down rain upon us as individuals, and as a whole congregation that we have gathered together, not only on Shiloh ground here, but all across the viewing centers in all nations of the hearts, receive our thanks. Receive our thanks. Receive our thanks. 
in the name of Jesus. And now again, our hearts are open to you. Feed us. Satisfy us. Enlighten us. Empower us. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name. Please give a big hand to the Lord and take your seat. For another word that we received a little while ago from our mother, let's give a big hand to the Lord. I believe that through that word, our hearts are already inoculated for deeper love for God. Your love for God will not go down. Your love for God will be on ever increasing dimension. Amen. The next word we shall be receiving is engaging the power of divine secrets. And I cannot take for granted this privilege and opportunity that is given to me again by my very dearly beloved Father, God's servant the apostle over this commission. The grace at work upon his life is working through me right now. And I believe that we all shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Engaging the power of divine secrets. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29 is our text. The secret things there are open things and there are secret things. Open things make common men. Secret things make stars in the kingdom. But they belong unto the Lord, our God. But out of these secret things, he chose to reveal them to us, his children, forever. So, as children of God, we are entitled to the secret of God that we may do all the words of this law. In every house, children are entitled to the properties of their father. Our God operates by secrets. And in the course of Shiloh 2021, God will deliver to you secrets. Amen. Looking at great men in scriptures, we discover that their stardom is rooted in the secrets they discovered. Their discoveries turned into their stardom. So secrets are winning cards for those who will become more than a conqueror. It becomes necessary there for us for, to keep hunting for the secrets of God. Keep hunting for the secrets of God. It will interest you to know that Secret is not what you can study. It's not what you can learn. It can only be received as delivered by God, as revealed by God, who is in possession of it. It will interest you to know also that secrets cannot be copied. Every child of God is entitled to specific secrets of his life. Don't copy what somebody else has. You are entitled to having your own from God. Faith Abanaku is a secret that God delivered to his servant. Nobody can copy it. Also, 
secrets cannot be contested or competed. If you find someone triumphing, living as more than conqueror, don't try to copy him. Don't try to compete with him. You may develop heart attack for it. Men who have the secrets of God have no competitors. No. And you discover that they do this because it is secret revealed to them. When you assess the secrets of God, struggles are terminated in your life. Somebody ask me, you always smile. You don't look like you carry any problem. And I tell them it's as a result of the secret of God revealed to me on how to make the most of life. Many years back, God's servant said, somebody met him and said, Brother David, do problems come your way at all? And he answered back, maybe they came and I didn't know. From today, problem will no longer push you down. They can only be received as revealed by God from that scriptures that we read. Secrets are not accessible by intellectualism. You can learn the process of life, but you cannot learn its secrets. Look at what happened in the days of Daniel. Chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. When he was brought before the king to interpret a dream, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret things which the king had demanded cannot the wise men. Now, the wise there could the astrologers, those who search into the future. The magicians, those who use diabolical forces to discover things. The soothsayers, they cannot show them unto the king. These four categories of trade were specialists of their days. But Daniel said, look, they cannot assess it. But there is a God in heaven that revealed secrets. It will reveal your own to you. Yeah. Now, take it with a louder amen. Yeah. Remember, every child of God has access to his secrets. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. And make it known unto the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in later days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are as follows. And this is coming from someone who was a slave and a stranger in the land. You know, a slave has natural tendency for demoralization and inability to learn because of oppression and how it is being used. But not so with Daniel. When you assess God's secret, your educational status which is good, of course, has no relevance. You will be operating in a different world that others cannot understand. Covenant University is a secret revealed unto his servant. He had never worked in any university, administration, or management, yet commanding professors who are compelled to write without being forced by the reason of the secrets that proceed out of his mouth. The administration and management in this ministry is not learned from somewhere, nor copied from somewhere. They are delivered by the secrets of God. Can I ask you to please put your hand on your head? May the secrets of heaven as we have been enjoying as a commission, come upon you from today. 
Now, please permit me. I'm not just teaching this morning by the privilege given to me, but I'm standing on the power that back up this commission. I know what has been working here. And each of us, as sons and daughters of the prophet in the house, must go with our portion. With secrets, you will never be sounded again. Quick examples. Example shows to you, this is how to do it. Example inspires you to know it can be done. It can be done. And this is how to do it. So let's look at a few examples. Number one is Joseph. Through divine secret, he became enthroned. Joseph, like we know his story very well, at age 17, he was sold out. No opportunity for extensive education. Sold out as a slave. While settling down in slavery, an attack came on him. And from slavery to the prison. And in the prison, the breath of God came upon him. The secrets of God is what we call the breath of God. The breath of God moving on human brain to make it operate in a supernatural dimension. Somebody is receiving that right now. <laughs> Genesis chapter 41 from verses 15, verses 38 to 41. Hear the story of Joseph after he interpreted the dream of the king. Genesis 41, 38. The king said, in and Pharaoh said unto Savan, Can we find such one as this? That is, he's not in the class of anybody. You cannot classify men who have access to the secret of God. They, they are in a different class entirely. A man in whom the spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, No consultation with anybody. When you are prayed by this secret, nobody asks for your CV. For as much as God has shielded thee, remember, God is the one who shows secret. All this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Therefore, thou shalt be over my house. Access to divine secret puts people over. Thou shalt be over. You don't go under with divine secrets. And according to your word, Joseph, I handed over to you. I hand over to you. Shall all my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be greater than you. I will be statutory king. You will be functional king. Thou shalt be over my house. Sit by my side. Divine secrets created a throne for Joseph. God who has given a place to this commission will give you your throne. <laughs> Number two is Daniel. He got a place in Babylon. A stranger is not permitted to cast a vote in a nation where he lives. But not so with Daniel. He didn't even need to vote. He was voted in without going through the process of nomination and screening and endorsement. Daniel chapter 2, verses 17 to 19. Death sentence was hanging on the people. The king said, if you don't interpret this, I kill all of you. Men of secrets don't become cheap free in the hand of the enemy. And Daniel went to his house and made the thing known unto um, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, verse 18, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this, that Daniel and his fellow, fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. At Shiloh ground here, certain secrets shall be revealed to you. Now, if you go down the line to the end of the chapter, the king 
stood up and bowed before Daniel. Why you find a king bowing down to a slave? Something must have happened. Watch out. From Shiloh 2021. Everyone who have looked down on you will be looking up to you. Everyone who have said, what will he matter? What will he become? They will see you becoming greater than they've ever imagined. He bowed and worshipped and did oblation unto Daniel. He worshipped him. And he commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. His smell was replaced by odor. And the king acknowledged his God. People will glorify your God from now. Yeah. Number three example was Job. Who was noted to be the greatest man in his days. Job chapter 1. Verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz. That will be your description very shortly. <laughs> Whose name was Job? Remember, in Shiloh, God is giving you a new name. He's giving you a new name. He's giving you a new title. He's giving you a new name. That man, Job, operated by the secret of God. Verses 2 and 3. He had children, seven sons and three daughters. And in verse 3, his substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, and 5,000 she asses, and a very great storehouse. So that this man was the greatest. The secrets of God don't put you in the middle. The greatest. Men of divine secret are always operating at the topmost top, the greatest. He became the greatest. He became the greatest in business, in commerce. The greatest of men, I imagine, from Shiloh 2021. <laughs> but Job said in chapter 29, verses 1 to 4, he by himself recording how he gained access to the secret of God. Moreover, Job continued this parable and said, Hold that I were in the months past, as in the days when God preserved me. When his candle shined upon my head, and when his light, when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, do you know that from now, every day you wake up, you will know what to do? <laughs> Men of secret always know what to do. That's why you find them smiling. They smile because they know what to do. The reason why people are weeping and crying is because they don't know what to do. You hear somebody crying, I don't know what to do again. Another person is smiling. There is a way out because he knows what to do from this moment you will always know what to do <laughs> number four example in the new testament was paul the apostle who emerged the most impactful apostle of the hardly of the early church the most impactful on one side, he was a great intellectual. But when Paul realized the secret of God, he said, all that I know, I count them but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of God. Then Paul will say, let's leave aside what I knew before. Let's come to revelations. Let's come to visions and revelations. He valued divine secrets. He talked about talking about the wisdom of men. He said, let's put that aside and let's talk about the wisdom of God, the secrets of God. It was not intellectualism that made Paul. It was the secrets of God. Now, in the New Testament, the secrets of God are referred to as the mysteries of God. They are the same. The secrets of God, the mysteries of God. 
the unveil exclusive insight that God gives which cannot be learned which cannot be studied for but as revealed by God Ephesians chapter 1 chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 Paul talked about the mystery unveiled to him in 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 and 16 his co-laborer Peter talked about the mystery of the wisdom of God in the life of Paul Second Peter plays. He talked about that mystery. Now, if divine secret is as important, how do I assess it? How do I assess divine secrets? Number one, the gateway to a divine secret is new birth. You must be born again. Jesus made it very clear with two outstanding scriptures. John 3.3 3, You must be born again. For except ye be born again, you cannot see the secrets of God. The kingdom of God is operated by the secrets of God. You cannot see. You cannot assess the secrets of God. That's why you find a lot of people not born again, have intellectualism, but live in stupidity. Otherwise, how do I explain? A professor lying down with a little girl of his, the age of his daughter in a car. Go home, carry the mattress, beat his wife and take it to his girlfriend. Intellectualism with stupidity. But when you have the secrets, the wisdom of God that comes via new birth, everything about you changes. Why? Eternal life gives you access to the life of God which contains the secret of God. Through new birth, you become one with God in relationship. Mark 4.11 Jesus speaking out there said unto them unto you who are the you, those who are born again is given to know is given to assess the mystery of the kingdom of God but unto them that are outside the faith all these things are done in parables you know parables can lead you to guesses the secrets will lead you to accuracy and precision. That's why when men who have access to these secrets speaks, nobody speaks again. Job said, after my speech, nobody spoke again. Because those who are prayed by the secret of God, there is nothing to add to them, nothing to subtract from them. Accuracy, precision, everything falls in place. It's a total package. Born again, you are cut short of the life of God and therefore cut short of the glory of God. Number two is walking in the fear of God. We have heard about a portion of this in the first teaching. Walking, that is practical living in the fear of God. Walking in the fear of God makes you a friend of God. It makes you a friend of God, thereby gaining access unto the secrets of God. Now, <laughs> uh, what your blood brother may not know, your true friend knows everything. That's why there is no distance of communication among friends. Somebody can travel from here to go to Lokoja. They say, what are you going for? There is a very important step I want to take. I need to discuss with my friend. Uh -uh. You can't find anybody in Lagos? Say, no, this one is a heart-to-heart -heart matter. He's my friend. That's what the fear of God does. Abraham was a man who feared God. 
and God took him at his friend. Isaiah 41, 8, Genesis 18, 17, shall I do anything without telling Abraham, my friend, my friend, walking in the fear of God makes you a friend of God. The friendship of Abraham and God began when God said, walk before me and be that perfect. Genesis chapter 18 or chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, walk before me and I mean be that perfect. Live an upright life. Psalm 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is reserved to them that fear him. Exclusive. Psalm 25 verse 14. Joseph said, but I fear God. Genesis 42, 18. Job was a man who feared God and eschewed evil. He was not chewing evil. He was eschewing it. He was throwing it out of his mouth. Walking in the fear of God gives you access to the secrets of God. Number three, be in love with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. I had not seen, nor hears heart, neither has it entered into the heart of anyone. The things which God had set aside exclusively for them who love him. Love for God gives you access into the heart of God. Love for God gives you access into the heart of God. Love makes you live inside God because God is love. We had that in the second teaching. You live in the same room sharing the same bed with God when you love him. God makes himself naked to you when you love him. Love has no hiding place. Love is naked. So when you love God, God becomes naked to you. Between husband and wife, there is no locking of wardrobe. There is no locking of bedroom. There is no locking of briefcase. I know of some men who lock their briefcase. Where there is love. Everything is naked. Nakedness is the proof of love. At the marriage of Adam and Eve, the Bible says they were naked and not afraid. They were not ashamed. They were not afraid that anything may be known. That's what love for God does for you. He calls you by a name. He calls you strange names that people don't call you outside. He calls you my son, my daughter my beloved and it shows you things because you are in love with him so if you deepen your love you gain further access into the secrets of god the secrets of god here means either the word of god or the voice of god the rema or the logo of god speaking to you it shows you things to come he reveals things to you that others don't know Somebody, you are receiving that from today. Yeah. David was a lover of God. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. And David gained access to the secret of God. Remember, he's one who wrote that verse in Psalm 25. That, that chapter 25 of Psalms. He talked about the love of God, the fear of God. God did not hide things from him. He was anointed to be king, but he operated as a prophet and a priest. How? Through love. Listen to me. Love can take you beyond what God initially planned for you. Initially, God planned for him to be ordained as a king. But he loved God. He stepped from kingship to priesthood. And from priesthood to prophethood. There is no ceiling of unveiling of secrets to lovers of God.
there is no ceiling. There is no ceiling. Love is like a depth that has no limit. You cannot find the depth of it. The love of God. You cannot create a height for it. You cannot create breath for it. You cannot create depth for it. It takes you from deep to deep, from depth to depth, from height to height. Please permit me to say, I draw inspiration a lot from our spiritual father, God's servant. When I see his love for God, and I discover the same operating in my life, I want us to love God like our spiritual father loved God. There will be no ceiling to you. You will find yourself just operating in realms beyond imagination. In your business, in your career, in your family, and in all facets of your life. Now, standing in the gap this morning, I release this depth of love for God into your heart. I don't wish to have what he has. I only pray to love God the way he loves God. Because if I do what he does, I will see what he sees. By privilege, I hear him tell me about things happening in Canaan land here. And I said, man, let's try. Let's do something. As the cells were growing in Canaan land this year, we are also growing our only two way. When I see love, when I see passion, he calls me and says, my son, uh, our outreach team have just reached 120,000 and then from that to 140 and more. Ah, I say, man, I must wake up here. <laughs> Every time he speaks to me, that way I become restless. I just jack off from the bed. I'm going for outreach. I'm going for outreach. I must love God the way this man loves God. Is somebody receiving right now? <laughs> Quickly. Number four. Engage in prayers of inquiry. You remember the story of Daniel and his men, his companion? Please learn to have prayer partners with you. Even those of you in business. You should put people at your gate who are spiritual, not unbelievers who are smoking and drinking. Who will drive God away from you? Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Chapter 2, verses 17 to 19. When they prayed. In prayer, we place demand for the secret things of God. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Ask. And at this point, I recommend for each and every one of us to learn to pray in the language of the Holy Spirit. Because mystery can only invite mysteries. Praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. First Samuel, I mean, First uh, Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. He that prays in an unknown tongue. Nobody knows what he's saying. How be it he's speaking mysteries. He's speaking in secret. Using another language is a secret to somebody who doesn't know the language. By that, you connect with your spiritual source. Learn to pray in the language of the Spirit on a daily basis. Especially when you are confronted with issues that you don't understand. I tell people when you don't understand what is happening, pray in the language that you don't understand. Stop saying, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Then pray in the language you don't understand. Let it be the one you don't understand against the situation you don't understand. Number five, be committed to working in the spirit. Secret things are spirit things. Working in the spirit deepens your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Then I heard the secret. I heard the voice spoken to me. Revelation chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. two. I heard the voice say to me, come up here. And I will show you the things to come. Be in the spirit. Don't let carnality rule your life. Be in the spirit. Number six. As may be necessary or required from time to time, engage in prayer and fasting. Not necessarily the church fasting day, which of course all of us are involved in, in public worship, 
in public declaration that we should fast, but in your private time. Let me recommend for you what is being described as living a fasted life. It doesn't have to be the whole day, but times when you deny yourself of food by reason of what is ahead of you. Some people are in failure and they are still eating. Ah. Things are not working and you are still eating with your two hands, with your ten fingers. And in between meal, when you should stay away from food and look up to God, Lord, which way? Lord, which way? Sometimes it does even, not even take you a whole day. Lord, which way? If it takes you up to a day, it will not kill you. Lord, which way? Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 to 23, they were confronted with a situation. They needed to know how to go. And they fasted and afflicted their bodies. Now listen, when you fast, your body goes down, your spirit comes up. Fasting is essentially for your spiritual adjustment. Fasting cannot change God, but it can change you and change situations. And God was entreated for them. He showed them the secret. Finally, number seven. Always acknowledge God as source of your more than a conqueror exploit. Daniel, I mean, Genesis chapter 42, verse 15 and 16. As soon as Daniel appeared before the king, chapter 41, please, verses 15 and 16. The king said, are you the Daniel that they talked about? You don't look like it. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of you that you can understand a dream and interpret it. And Joseph answered, it is not in me. I'm not the one doing it. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. The same thing with Daniel. Verse 19, the secret was revealed to him and he blessed the Lord. And in verse 20, he gave praise and thanks to God. For every access you have to God's secret, don't forget to thank him. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And in verse 20, he first of all celebrated God for giving it to him ever before he went to meet the king. Always be thankful. The thankful are usually always the inspired. David said, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reign also instruct me in the night season. Psalm 16 verse 7. I know that from here, the secret of God is resting upon your tabernacle. <laughs> Rise to your feet with me. And pray right now, Father... Grant me new access to your secrets. I don't want to operate as a common man again. I want access to your secret that will turn me to more than a conqueror. Somebody is receiving it right now. You are receiving it right now. You are receiving it right now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please give God a big hand and take your seat. For that word from the Lord, give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. Our visitation, please pay attention to the Shiloh announcement. Number one, praise the Lord. You are welcome to the hour of visitation. Expect to experience definite encounters with God via His Word that will, that will empower you to emerge as more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Two, please acquaint yourself with the schedule of services. The specialized sessions at Shiloh include the following. Healing and deliverance, which will take place here at the Hope Arm in the Faith Tabernacle. Fathers and Mothers of Nations, which will take place at the Faith Arm, 
breaking generational causes taking place at glory arm tent, breaking marital sieges taking place at honor entrance tent, academic breakthrough at hope arm tent, business and career turnaround at the youth chapel, and building an exemplary Christian home at the Faith Tabernacle Love Arm. The minister's conference will take place at the Covenant University Chapel. Please note that all specialized sessions, including the minister's conference, takes place at 1.30 p.m. daily. Details on the locations for these specialized sessions, as well as other facilities and services, as indicated in your information bulletin. Number three, praise the Lord. Please be reminded, as announced yesterday, that the Youth Alive Forum will not hold at Shiloh 2021. All youth are admonished to take advantage of the various specialized sessions as relevant to their respective needs. Consequently, the encounter night will now take place at 6 p.m. daily. Number four, praise the Lord. We are all admonished to acquaint ourselves with the camp ethics contained in our bulletin and report any violations or suspicious behavior via the contact details contained therein. Number five, please be informed that Yoruba translation takes place at the youth chapel while French translation takes place at the hope wing of the faith tabernacle. Finally, number six, Shiloh offerings. Be reminded that those who desire to sow their offerings in checks should write such checks in favor of faith tabernacle Canaan land and all sacrificial seeds should be in favor of faith tabernacle sacrifice. However, for all those outside Canaan land, please write your checks in favor of the local assembly. Also, various electronic giving channels are available on the church website. Jesus is Lord. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's time for Shiloh offering. It is those who honor God with their substance that prosperity does not give distance. You have social distance. If you don't want prosperity to give you a distance, then honor God with your substance. Package your offerings for Shiloh because what lifts your hand that will tell me what will leave heaven to you. If you want something great to leave heaven to you, something must be released from your own hands. It is what is released from your hands that means how God responds from heaven to you. God will never respond until something has left your hand. If you have done that, shall we rise and then speak to that offering in your hands that God, I'm releasing this to you in worship and that God who is faithful will release what he has for you. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are releasing what you have given to us in the first place to worship you. Every hand lifted today is blessed in the name of Jesus. You will never see anything called hardship in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated as we call on the choir to minister. Somebody is returning with victory. Somebody is gone with a spring too. Just people.
go ahead and let's give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a bigger clap and a louder shout of praise. Can we lift our hands and thank him for the first word, the second word, and the third word that came our way this morning. Give him the praise and give him the honor. A big clap and a shout of praise as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9 and in verse 8. He said, the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it had lighted upon Israel. We have heard first word, second word, third word, and one word is yet coming. That word that changes lives is the word God sent. Until it is sent, change does not happen. If a life must be changed, it must receive the sent word. And not just the word we heard, but the word that enters. He sent his word into Jacob. He said, the entrance of the word giveth light. Now, the word that enters does three things. First, it brings light. It brings illumination. It brings distinction. Causes you to become a revelation. 